Hello and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be looking at solving quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So they have an x squared term, so the degree is two, unlike straight line or linear equations which have a degree of one, so they are of the form ax plus b equals zero. So this is one degree higher. And there's different ways to solve them. There's a thing called the quadratic formula, which we will look at in another video. Um, but yeah, generally you wouldn't know the quadratic formula unless it was given to you. Um, some equations are quite uh, nice and can be solved quite quickly just by inspection, just depending what the numbers are, what A, B and C are. But some aren't so easy. Um, but a very powerful and proven method, which has been around for many, many years, which is very useful is this thing called completing the square. And it's actually very important because that's actually where the quadratic formula comes from. In order to get the quadratic formula, we have to apply completing the square method. But we will do that in another video. I just wanted to introduce completing the square first so that you get familiar with it. Um, it's not that difficult, but you just need to watch carefully and, and see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so the general form is ax squared plus bx plus c. And in our example, x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And we're asked to solve this for x, find the roots of x. I'm not going to do any graphs or anything at this point. This is just pure algebra. Um, I'll maybe draw a graph later um, to demonstrate it further. Okay, so we're going to solve this by completing the square. Now, what does completing the square do? Well, let's have a look over here. So the general form for quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So by completing the square, what we're doing is we're transforming it into this form here, x minus e all squared minus f equals zero. So it's just a matter of finding e and f. And then once we have that, in that form, we can solve pretty quickly for x. Um, let's just quickly do this bit. So x minus e squared equals f, obviously. Pretty, pretty obvious. So then if we take square roots is equal to the square root of f. But remember, there's two solutions. When you take a square root, you can have the positive or the negative of the square root. And then x is equal to e plus or minus the root of f, because we just take the e over to the other side. And that's it. There's our solution for x. There's the two roots of x for our quadratic equation. We've solved it. So x is equal to e plus or minus the root of f. So once we know e and f, we've got our answer. Okay, and that's a lot easier than that, isn't it? Would you agree? Having it in this form, you can pretty much write the answer down very quickly. Right, however, it's getting it to that is what we're going to be looking at now. So back over to our example here. So we want to write this in this kind of form here. Okay. So if you remember, so let's just let's just write this down first. Uh, in fact, let's just I'll write I'll write the example down again. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to x minus e all squared minus f. And obviously that equals zero because we're solving for x. Now, this is the form we want it in and this is the form we have it currently in. So now what we can do now is we can expand this out, the x minus e squared to get x squared minus two e x plus e squared. And then you've got your minus f obviously. And that, that stays the same. I'm not going to rewrite that out. Okay, so now we've got this x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals x squared minus 2x plus e squared minus f. Okay, in fact, I'll just, I'll just write it down just so, just so you can see it a little bit easier. Right, so what we're going to do now is, so this left-hand side is equal to this right-hand side. So now we're going to compare coefficients. So comparing coefficients, what do we get? 
we get that, so the coefficient of x is minus 2e, and over here it's minus 6. So minus 2e equals minus 6. So that implies e equals 3. There you go, we found e. So how, that wasn't very difficult, was it? We found e. So now all we need is f. And again, we just compare coefficients. So over here we have 8 as our constant term. And over here we have e squared minus f. So that means e squared minus f equals 8. And we already found e. e is 3. So therefore, 3 squared minus f equals 8. Therefore, that implies f equals 3 squared minus 8, which is 1. So f is 1. So therefore, e equals 3 and f equals 1. So now we plug those back in up here. So therefore, x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals x minus e squared minus f equals x minus 3 squared minus 1. So there you go, we've transformed it into this form. So we've technically we've completed the square on our original equation. x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to x minus 3 all squared minus 1. And that's it. We've completed the square on that. And now we can write down the solution very quickly. So if that equals 0, then so therefore the roots um, x minus 3 all squared minus 1 equals 0. So there's our answer. So x is equal to 2 or 4. So x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 1. So it's equal to 2 or 4. And we can quickly verify that. Plug those back in. If x is 2, we get 2 squared is 4 minus 12 is minus 8. Plus 8 is 0. If x is 4, we get 4 squared 16 minus 24 is minus 8. Plus 8 is 0. So there only is two solutions. And we found them. And we found them by completing the square. We didn't do any fancy factorization or algebra or anything. Okay, we strictly done it by completing the square. Okay, you, when you write it in this form. So guys, thanks for watching the video. In the next video, I'm going to look at the derivation of the quadratic formula. We're gonna go through um, completing the square on the general equation to come up with this quadratic formula. So see you on the next video.